Um, so I am, it's a really inspiring hot talk. I've been in Boiler Room. Uh, I was there later. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> so tired and I'm sick. And um, I've, I've seen many of them. It's one of the very first, I think, initiatives I've seen in Instagram because I was still kind of new. And the time would be what we could say art music scene. And so uh, I really wanted them to come. <laughs> so thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for every artist time. Um, uh, we can head to Q and A now. Uh, we can all ask, I guess, um, three to five questions. Um, I do have some um, coming from, I guess, because I have a collective too. And, um, it's been, I guess, hard to like. Um, I don't know how, how people usually do it because uh, usually there's someone really calling the shots but inevitably there's someone who has to. So like um, deciding deciding in general what would be the vision, what would be the mission, who is this for? It's something different for everyone then, especially for a collective. So, um, with all of these cases, I guess, um, how did you get to like, how did you get to like, to like, um, this is our priority right now, um, culture versus access, how do we like, um, bridge those things, and um, were there instances that um, it was really hard, and I don't know, parang, how, what kind of like work is needed to bridge those things? Like internally, I don't know. For everyone then. Since, um, I guess this is speaking more from, I'm speaking more from an organizational standpoint. I'm more of like, I work in collectives also. So um, for those, I know. For all the speakers, or like if those, for those people. Now, my experience. So, like, how do you like pinpoint uh, from all of those thoughts what needs to be done at the moment? And, or like, where does that come from? Or kaya mo ha masyadong um laden or like so like Sean and I talk about this a lot, which is um, um, like for example, one of the things that we uh, always have to consider, like uh, we have, since morning, we've had a lot of foreigners sort of message us, we like, hey, like, I want to you guys on the studio, I want to play and get them links for MCR. And because we operate on a volunteer basis, so we're like, okay, who's free to like meet with this guy? and to set up a satellite studio and help it broadcast. Um, but then a lot, like we encountered a few people, like there's just one person who was literally like ticking the boxes of all the internet radios, like he just wants to tick the boxes. And there are a lot of people who have already visibility or have already toured or like have done a lot already, but then let's say we're busy with other projects that require um, engaging with the local communities. And I think like, for us, it's um, really getting your priorities straight and um, who are you surveying for? So like with MCR, we're really on the of like um, reaching out to uh, creative people who don't have resources or are underprivileged or um, are marginalized or queer, who, 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 lack, who could lack maybe the resources or the platform or the visibility to pursue their creative practice. If you're, we're not closed off to people who are like more famous or who have a lot of followers, whatever. But like when it comes to day to day, if we're making a choice, like which one do we do first? Like obviously we're gonna go to the one where uh, or a project that requires um, a bit more engagement with people who have less resources. So there's a priority. It's like recognizing your your capacity, but also not forgetting like who are you doing it for. Like, yeah, then pinpointing that sort of, I guess, not the target market, but like the the focus of your your efforts, really. Um, 
Okay, sige, I'm talking uh, uh, sa point of view naman si this guy. So, I'd like to imagine, siguro ito, yun parang isa sa aking mga ideal business. I'd like to imagine na, so, 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 so selecting, ano, parang selecting sa artist that you feature, may question mo, may, may, ano, may trust na question. Uh, I guess more of like, um, how do you pinpoint or how do you align your values sa first thing that you're gonna do or like your priorities that um, how you curate, how you program things, uh, paano, paano nyo um, ini-invite your vision or mission. I have a question about that. Can you make it more concrete or specific, your question? Like, are you are you having some, some problem that's related to your question? Um, I guess um, with collective work, I know, parang, um, with a lot of people on the, parang sometimes and having decisions na kailangan gawin it. This person wants something, this person needs na, ah, let's, let's pick the most famous one because it will bring us more resources or something. Like how, how do you, how do different groups like tackle the problem? I guess that's just, what I wanted to do, like how different groups um, tackle that problem. Uh, uh, for, for me, I'm not, a, I'm not a visual artist, but I'm a fan of artists and, and I'm really happy that this, this kind of initiatives already take place. Um, for me, what, what I find destructive yeah. is... Uh, would you like to use the mic, please? Ah, uh, so you... You are the right? Sorry. So, um, sorry, Andy. So, yeah, what I like to talk about is, um, aside from asking in um, um, venues like this and events like this, it's also to your point, doing my own, but uh, I know what I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. So, when, when um, things that topics about organizations, organizational buildings, since that's what your, your concern is, like, I'm afraid, uh, no, uh, apparently you have, you have a question related to building an organization or running an organization in your Arts, art, um, art journey? Um, most likely just curious about how different groups do it. See, so yeah. So one, one, um, yeah, one way to, to go about it is uh, not separating or compartmentalizing the personal experience or individual, individual experience from the, uh, uh, from the social or overall experience. So the tendency, um, yeah, that, that's one fallacy or pitfall that sometimes we so sometimes you, you just want to do it like I want to serve the people and like very um, that way. And sometimes there is an imbalance along the way, and because of the, because of your desire to serve the people, for example, in your heart, you neglect other important parts. So that is the fine balance that you have to determine on your own as you grow as an artist and as you grow with your circle, circles of artists. And that's the, that's what that's what the freedom and art um, freedom and art. Um, yeah, dialectics or like in relationships um, grow or like what I'm going to. But yeah, um, as I've seen earlier, I find it always constructive to study on my own, discover my own. Um, and also, um, that means reading um, different, different points of view and also uh, talking different, well, different <coughs> points of view. That sometimes I'm not reading not, really not within my, my comfort zone. So when I when I try whenever I try to test my comfort zone without overdoing it, um, that's when I find important gems that helps my art or my my love for art, my support, my desire to support art. Yeah. Thank you so much for that insight. Um, would you like to continue your your answer or insight? Okay, simple answer na siguro. Uh, ito na lang sa choosing na lang, ano, who, who to feature siguro sa, sa game. Something, something, something. Uh, ang pinagawa ko, so, when choosing who to feature, kunyari, nagtigil, ano, so, sino ba yung, uh, I try to take away yung the more privilege, and at least kung may access na talaga sa, sa, ang tawag ito. So, they have regular games, they get paid, and yung mga, medyo i-give, yung name. Tapos meron na silang, kunyari, ano, may chummy-chummy na sila na values. Nakikita mo, sila-sila lang. So 
sorry ya, ini jadi mispahit Kalau ya, kita ada kemarin di warasan nih ya. <laughs> So, I'd like to imagine a city side A champion in the, the less visible So, platform siya ng electronic music More on the experimental and playful side Tapos, ayun, yung mong di edgier side ng electronic music Ayun yung TV ko, na number one So, yung hindi masyadong nilalagal sa electronic music Kasi electronic music is very broad So, we, we have DJ music, we have club music And we have the EDM, etc, etc Kasi yung mga yung uh, medyo extreme We have noise, we have like, uh, industrial, etc, etc So, yun Ang TV feature ko, yung hindi masyadong nakakapag-gig So, yung hindi pa nagigig pati So, like for example, there's still a desire whether to perform or not I try to approach them For example, I've heard your work Tapos sabi ko lang, ah, there's a Would you like to perform? Nagdata nila ako kami sa Bisa. Tapos for example, uh, some friend, Oh, I know somebody like this, like this, like that. And then, papakarili niyo sa akin yung work. So maybe you could invite him, you know, we make him attend the new event. Tapos nila, I could talk to him. Ganun yung ginagawa ko na, parang curation, choosing who to feature in our shows. So I try to, we try to represent it. Alis ko yung personal na kasi, let's start as a personal project. Uh, I try to choose, we try to choose. <laughs> we try to choose the best person. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, if any more questions, or is this okay? Yes, I'm sorry. This question goes specifically for FSI and Kuya Sean. In regards to. <laughs> in regards to. It's about bullets. Um, do you guys think. Um, Because I believe that it's already a subgenre in the electronic scene, and you know, um, some artists in Europe are adapting the style. I'm not trying to incite that they're copying what's happening here, but they think that their palettes are kind of catching up to this musical stuff that's already happening in Visayas and Mindanao. Do you think, um, you know, in the future, like names like? Good thoughts, like that, that two syllable word could actually be for, yeah, formally recognized, you know, in the, well, I don't want to industrialize it, but in the industry, I guess. Um, I think the, the effort that we're doing with MCR is to really um, raise awareness on good as it is known as a category or a genre. Because uh, there is a history that spans 20 years, um, starting with Sherman. And actually, it started as a dance. And then, nawala na sila ng music to dance to. So, Sherman started making the music. Um, but it's interesting that you raised this question. Because, parang with Budots, it was also just like an amalgamation of different um, um, forms of music that Sherman was interested in. So, he was really interested in Euro trance. And you might be like our Robert Miles children or like Bob Van Dyke or an Angel, like he was really inspired by like 2000s era dance. And then you couple that with like um, with Bajau um, musical composition and then the sound bites of like the an urban city with Europe trans and an internet new culture. Um, but that's itself is like uh, borrowing from different cultures already that I don't think it tries to take ownership of that sound either. Actually, when you listen to a lot of acid music, um, like acid techno, you'll hear like a Budotsi sound too. Um, I think now I, there is just a more concerted effort to um, bring recognition to the history of Budots as it came out from Gangnam. Um, and if I think, I think Within the, I think Boiler Room gave that a lot of visibility. Um, and I do think there's potential. Because uh, within the history of Badots, it's very similar to UK Grime, very similar to Amapiano, wherein um, the producers were using really um, like fruity loops or really DIY forms of um, sounds. And uh, just distributing that independently of the internet. So, Budots has a very similar historical trajectory as um, Grime and Amapiano, which are now like incredibly popular. So, 
Yeah, well, I think one step at a time, I think. Um, but I do think there's potential in the one. And if, if, if it means the recognition will not only raise awareness amongst musicians now, okay, this is a serious art form and not just a joke, because actually a lot of people in the Philippines still think it as a joke, um, sadly. And it'll take a lot of time. But not only that, but to actually, um, I guess, raise the profile of it you know, as an art form. Um, that's that's really and also to compensate the artists fairly finally would be good. So hey, parang in conjunction na kasi I talk to another like scholar kasi bringing up sa kanya na I might do a research project on the dustbin and he brought up na yung as in a study niya yung parang history of it um parang yung roots niya sa GT music and how. Mahirap it trace like a single trace of like Buddhas because it's very it's something na parang ba? parang ang um, process daw is merong drum track na parang um yun na kayo as much as a speaker and then ano parang parang kaya siya medyo familiar yung tunog ng Buddhas na drum because it's something na can easily be sampled or like but like it's easy to transfer, it's easy to replicate it, and kaya mahirap daw it trace at like kami ko siya ng research project kasi parang sa mga so paano it retrace yung authorship of this thing if it's something na very communal made, um, usually some artists, so mga GP drivers, like it's, it's parang yung production niya is very doon parang daw parang it might be years in the making daw yung gagawin ko siya but I'm super um, looking forward to the conversation on our research project. And uh, and any other questions? Then, you know, the reason for this is because I know it came from Indonesia. He knew the Dayan Dayan. Dayan Dayan. Dayan Dayan. Dayan Dayan. Dayan Oh, South, I mean, Southeast Asia generally, parang like very similar cultures. So we think about like community culture and the music that they're playing in their own um, public transport. Um, and yung, not only like um, the the yung DIY software that we use, or like the low cost software, but also just the sounds that you hear generally. You talk about like is you can probably hear that everywhere in Southeast Asia, or like the yung yung the craziness of the city in Jakarta or in Bangkok, um, very similar sort of vibe if you visit it. So para, um, that's another thing that I think is really underrated within the discourse of Buddhists is the only connection between the Southeast Asian countries. There's even like Japanese Buddhists, so like Japanese producers like making their own Buddhists. Um, and what's really nice about, I guess, when we talk to Sharon GDJ Love is he's really not um, gatekeeping or protective of the genre. As long as like it reaches more people, like it's fine. I think the one thing that um, Baran is only starting to open up to now is that but that is like uh, 140 BPM. For him, it's like 140 BPM all the time. But now, like, I thought they're like slower forms of buddhuts. And now he's only starting to open up the ah, okay, <laughs> So that's funny. Um, and yeah, And also, I guess, like, buddhuts traditionally has like a syncopated um, drug pattern. Uh, it's like. <laughs> So, but I think that's how that, like, you can distinguish that from maybe, like, um, maybe forms of buddhas that have, like, a four by one pattern. Um, the buddhas that, I guess, comes from, like, a dago that has a syncopated pattern, almost like a star or a cake. Um, so I guess that's one way you could sort of trace it, is, like, um, does it have that, um, quintessential pattern? Um, and then the sounds also, oh, oh. Um, but, you know, it always changes, depending on where. I have a question for everyone who spoke. I'm just wondering if you guys feel that a community, a successful community, 
stress dependent on the teacher or the group of leaders, the people who are leading that community. Because um, what's up, people are talking about Tena, Synthesize has no, no, and share as you guys. So, well, what I'm going to have you guys talk about um, consensus and trying to get everyone involved in the decision making. But at the end of the day, you still have to choose whether the foreigner or the guy with no um, um, resources, right? So someone still has to make the decision. And I think what I'm wondering is, is that what a, a successful community could be, uh, the secret key is, I mean, sure, uh, if they only leave, he could have had continuity and then was that would still be successful. Or sure, if, um, if Nono wasn't alone, synthesize would be much bigger and better. But because he's alone, it's a little hard. But of course, I'm not about one person. But he always has to be like the force. Like the Catholic Church has Jesus, right? So <laughs> we go there. How do we go there? So why is that? Is that why? Right? That's why I'm wondering. <laughs> um, uh, I want to bring up like there, there was there, there was this science fiction novel called The Dispossessed, and there was a, there was a, a a theorist, an imaginary theorist in this planet, and it was Aldo, and supposedly she wrote a book called The Social Organism, and she like you only get bits of this because the science fiction writer and that book and did not invent like an entire science for us to then write fiction around it. They were little bits of like of what all those supposed to have done. But apparently this book was supposed to talk about the social organism, but think about like a, 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 a community as kind of like multiple multiple made out of multiple parts, but not all of which were equal. So it was the, the role of the community was to like allow each cell or unit of the community to sort of like flower to their full potential. And so that means that not everybody acts like a heart cell or not everybody really does like so. I think that um, it is maybe incumbent on the ones who can manage to channel the forces of the community to be as conscientious as about it as this channel as possible. But which is like what Nono, I mean, expressed and he said that he definitely curious. But I think that um, the idea of like, I, I don't know if I misunderstood you, Nono, but I mean that the idea of like a, a totally a, a horizontal courts the idea of like, you know, like of a plane rather than a body, you know, where everybody's equal and plays the same role. Whereas I think that the, the idea of social organism um, means that you, you, you sort of like respect the idea that there will be different capabilities and perhaps some people will be more and more suited to speaking or, and maybe making deals, but then it's incumbent for maybe those people to sort of like recognize that they're serving something and try to maybe have some kind of like fear and trembling about the decisions that they make, you know, try to make them, try to let them weigh on their consciences as heavily as possible. Maybe? I don't know if that's a problem in the It's really interesting that you bring that up because, um, you know, a hard, like, that by textbook standards, like a horizontal organization assumes that everyone has um, the same responsibilities and the same decision making powers that every, everyone receives. Like, I guess the benefit is really. But what I've observed with MCR, like for example, when it comes to, um, I guess, moralistic issues on where does MCR stand on this? Um, and there are people within the group who have a lot, of, a lot to say and are very passionate about things, but they won't be the ones at the front lines, or they won't be the ones that will have to face, let's say, a person or like another organization and like relay all that information to them. And then there are definitely other people in the group who have, I guess, that more quote unquote uh, leadership potential where it's like they can get, they're not stuck within their um, ways of doing. They really like listen to all the members and uh, thinking what they have to say 
um, and try to reach that consensus among everyone and then be the one to sort of negotiate the deal or to talk to the partners or get the grant. So I feel that, and that's not, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that because you know, I think people have different capabilities or have um, different thresholds for themselves. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe they have an idea in their head that they're comfortable expressing within their friends, but then when it comes to like being public facing, like you can't blame them if they can't do it or like they're not as articulate. Um, so it's really like um, being able to know like what people's capabilities are and helping them feel empowered with that. And I feel like that's what, I feel like that's what a successful collective is. It's not, not believing that everyone is equal because we really want to reach um, more, uh, not equality, but equity. So what is the leader who's doing that? Right. It's the leader who's saying. No, but, but that's 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 sometimes the leader is not the one that's like coming up with the breakthrough idea. It what? comes from like a member who comes up like with an MCR, I can think of someone who always plays devil's advocate and challenges everyone else, right. but they're the ones that like make that aware to the person who is more public facing. Um, and the person who is more public facing, it's their job to sort of channel, like you said, that um, that consensus. Okay. Yeah. I think what I'm saying is like it's unfair for us to be like, oh no no, I don't want to say you make all the best decisions you can. Like of course we'll all be part of the community, mm -hmm. but for us to recognize that we have someone who will have the say. I don't know. It's like, I think that's what I'm asking. Uh, that's a good question. Also, how we just define leadership. If leadership is just being like front facing, that might paint how you view the system and how it's organized. In the way that we organize our collective, it's like a leader doesn't have to be the one talking all the time. The leader can be the one who is working day to day, doing the quiet work. And I guess that's how we try to do the things in FCR, where it's like the hierarchy is not leader versus like worker ads, but everyone has their own competency and seeing each other for that is a form of leadership also. Um, yeah, I was telling that, wow, how would they do these things? How would they find my job? I didn't share too much about what I was doing. I didn't share about my experience in the, uh, yeah, with all that other stuff. <laughs> So, yun, I think it's very, I was saying, like, medyo complex yun. Because we were all, I feel we were friends, we were like the same age, and we all wanted to just do it. Because, you know, we really wanted to do it, but, like, kahit sa dad, you know, he mentioned Tengel is the face. Even us within, within the group, we tried to, like, break it, break it up. Um, Especially like when I joined, parang sa nayo si Tena and Francesca. They were doing Francesca was doing the admin work and Tena was doing the face. She was the last one, basically. Mga palimuhan. Yeah. So yeah, everyone was doing their thing. Yeah. 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 Um, so most of the uh, network But believe me, like we try to <laughs> we try to break it down. Like um, okay, this time um, Cheska and Joey will take the lead. But then we still could like decide without uh, oh I don't know yeah. Oh, so there's I, ideally it would be like that. Okay, everybody gets to say something because then people, you know, just got used to parang. Um, yeah, it was hard to until you know, the effect is everybody was exhausted. Parang uh, so. But kahit wala siya, we could have, mm, we wanted to do it. Oh. Yeah. But there's, there's still a, a lack of, um, 
Uh-huh. I guess uh, what I'm saying is like it's kind of hard to ownership. to all uh, the ownership and kind of change it with the way the parents everyone got used to this system. Yes. Yeah. So it, I'm very I'm very happy to hear that you're, you're starting out this way. Because <laughs> 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 the parents you know, yeah, yeah, starting out from the start. Um, whereas, you know, there's a lot of um, people join very idealistic and they really, you know, passionate, like for me. Um, but, uh, you know, you kind of have to work around the thoughts there. And there are going to be consequences. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There was this whole early on like a negotiation between like um within I wasn't part of this, but from what I from what I know about it, it was like there was a whole negotiation between like is MCR going to be represented by the individuals who were in the group or like the collectives that they represent. Um and that was sort of like a lot of attention point. Um and eventually what evolved out of it and the consensus that we came to is that within the team there are the volunteers who will participate in day-to-day operations. And they sort of have to be accountable for their work that they do on a day to day. But they also represent collectives that help us account for, they help us do checks and balances on ourselves. We're not just um, trying to rotate between the people who are convenient for us. So there's that sort of um, symbiosis between like the individual and the collective. You have to be accountable for yourself, but you also need to like check about like who are you representing in your community and are you doing more of an effort to like get out of your bubble. Um, so that's just a constant, constant negotiation we're having in MCR. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's great because we have to like go to side, even if, if you want to like, if in the end it's still a person's goal. Thank you. Just want to uh, observation. No? I noticed that the one who put on this, the one who put on this organization, worries, but rules and worries. But the time management, that they, the plan of ours, the the any more rules, any more frills in the organization, you know, you can link it to the student community. So, I'm going to observe it. So, I'm going to link it to the student community. Because I'm going to link it to the student community. I'm going to link it to the student community. I'm going to link it to the student community. Which is usually in my creatives. I'm going to link it to the student community. I'm going to link it to the student community. I'm going to link it to the student community. I'm going to link it to the student community. I'm going to link it to the student community. I'm going to link it to the student community. Hi, um, big fan. I did find that I'm not in the community really through the pandemic. Big fan. Um, my question is yes, I actually saw the gig with, with Harvey with the bunny ears. So, my question is like, yo, when is you can, when are you gonna have like another one? <laughs> Can I, can I get in on that? <laughs> Where do I sign up? I think the challenge now that we're facing is like to find funding for intentional projects like that. Um, with the Boiler Room grant, we we're lucky to be given the fund to, to pursue a really intentional research-based project. Um, so when we get the funding, I guess, we'll, we'll try to, to explore more scenes and some cultures that do need that. Um, but as with working with Boiler Room, it's, it was a one-off project, unfortunately. Yeah, it was a grant that we had applied for. We sent a research proposal and we were approved for that project. Uh, typically, if you want to work with Boiler Room, it's actually a more commercial process where you have to pay for a licensing fee to bring them over, which usually costs, yeah, a thousand plus dollars, almost like seven digits in peso. So we only could have done that because of the grant. 
Okay, so the last one was a sort of um, grant that you applied for. Yes, we applied for it. It was a uh, uh, second talk about. Wow. Okay. Please, please talk. About it. Actually, like if you guys are you know music producers, you can apply for the same grant um, as long as it's under the basis of broadcasting. So whether you're like, um, and it'll be broadcast in the order, but if you work, if you're a music producer, if you have a collective, you can sort of apply to this grant. It's called Broadcast Lab, and it's called the Boyer Broadcast Lab grant. And um, it helps fund projects within the broadcasting space. And you get the support of Boyer Group to mount an event and to basically, well, it's funny, because like when we were talking to them, they were like, don't think of it as an event, think of it as a shoot. And then we're like, okay, so when it clicked for us, why we needed to think about like the logistics of where the cameras will be, how many people are gonna be there, and sort of balancing the number of people who are there with like the actual shoot that's happening. So those are sort of the parameters, and they have different they have different departments because of their videos, which is like this was um this was an editorial show, so it's part of I guess like. Uh, CSR, like they're giving back to like small communities around the world through this grant. Um, and the, the, the constraint with that was that we weren't allowed to sell tickets. So we had to do a mix of like guest list and raffle system. So like people can register to like gain access. But if we went through the licensing route, then you can charge tickets and earn the money back. Um, and that's more, that's called a, I guess like a commercial show or like something along those lines. And it's, um, yeah, and then they have the sponsorships where they just like work with brands and like get the money back to themselves. But yeah, broadcast lab, you guys should apply next year. So you guys you guys um approach broadcast lab and and Kumbaga pitch this boiler room part or was it boiler room? It's, it's boiler room's grant. Boiler room's grant. And then the grant is called broadcast lab. It's under boiler room. So we had pitched, we pitched the idea to them from like concept to programming to marketing to production design, and we sent them a budget, like an estimated budget, and the uh, acts that we wanted to platform. So basically, we sent them a plan, like a, we pitched up debt in a way, um, and then yeah, I guess they were really interested in it, in it and they gave us the money for it. So like, like, cool. yeah, so that was cool, and you know, there's there was. I think there was a misconception that like we had paid for Boiler Room, but really it was like we we applied and then we pitched for it. We pitched for it, so um, that was cool. And it, it it was nice because it meant that like we were engaging with Boiler Room at like a level where um, it wasn't transactional. It was really like um, trying to spot like the subculture. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I have a question for for our. For our first speaker, Ken, okay, Mr. Dato Arellano. Uh, this is about maybe, because you, you said you were planning a workshop for, for the wonderful. So, Bali si Dato Tala, for those who were here earlier, he, he makes it so nice. Sa kanya yan, no? Ito, parang mo kang mga siya, rain stick. It's this one, it's this electronic instrument. So, it's in very active. It's good then, mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, are you open to, like, for example, or maybe you have a plan, like, for example, uh, a collaboration with Citizide to hold workshops? Because in DIY happening next weekend, next Saturday. So maybe there's part two, because it's positive that the reception here is going to be very experimental. <laughs> yes, no, yes. Um, actually, I think you know, of the Ocarina, and we a workshop here then. So, I don't know if uh, 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 But um, I also have, I'm working on one uh, that it could happen in January. So, uh, after that, I'm going to do it. So, yeah. Yeah, I want to, to do this uh, workshop here. Mm -hmm. uh, since the main success coach has a specific I guess one of the questions that I have is the role of the since um, I guess for the many of the talks, no pandemic, the 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 pand
yung ibang initiatives. Pero yung I guess ICR is next version of pandemic and you gain traction students do. So I guess how would you think of like yung continuity or like yung intentionality of marketing on the internet compared sa like say how things were done back then. Like um how do you see um initiatives like these uh, interacting with the web and the net and uh, I guess connecting people, connecting audiences. How how did it change things? Um, uh, I mean, okay, so this is like extracted from conversations like that. But um, uh, before, like around the mid 80s, um, Japan Foundation was a kind of center for like that made themselves kind of like, no, they were just, Japan was just naturally a cultural center. So that meant that uh, a lot of the, uh, for like Indonesia to be heard, like in Thailand, they would get invited to Japan, and then Japan would facilitate a meeting between Indonesia and Thailand. So Japan Foundation was central, it's a kind of clearinghouse. Um, around the 2000s or the 90s, um, I met like one of the curators of Japan Foundation, sort of like, mourn the loss of their uh, role in Anna uh, because they were not as active anymore. They were no longer the clearinghouse. Their role as a clearinghouse had lessened because the peripherals, the peripheral countries were like making their own connections to each other because of the internet. And this is actually something that Peng out said is that he was a creature of the internet. Because of the internet, the peripher the peripheries were able to make contact with each other and bypass the clearinghouse the center. And that's the, that was the net effect of that. The net effect of the internet is that it decentralized communications and like less of the power of centers, I would say. So WhatsApp was actually born, it was only made possible because of the internet. Otherwise, it was just to money, resource, intense heavy for it to happen otherwise. Once the internet happened, then you could invite people to show up using like, you know, Ryan here and then stay in your house. So it would open like house residencies. That was certainly made possible. Thank you for letting me some other um groups or initiatives can uh have their own insight about this. Uh and to see little future application on the internet. So because in the fact pandemic has Okay, everything started to go back to normal, di ba? Meron kayo hindi na address it, na, na, ano to, na-discuss to ni Tad kanina, something about archiving. Kayo, meron na kayo yung, ano, yung shows no, you have an archive, that's very good. Si Miss Daya, meron din siya, nag-start din siya ng archive, Sonic Archive. Ah, uh, baka kung pwede tayong gumawa din ng project similar on a bigger scale. Na-discuss na natin to, Frankie, pero medyo na natin. Oh, well, there's somebody else na lasing ako. Lasing ako. <laughs> Something like social media as an archive. Ito ang atalim eh. Hindi mo na. Lasing din ako na yun. 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 Basta isa sa mga kainuman. Sorry. Ang overworked time. So in this, uh, oh, this is happening. Yeah, uh, I'm doing this blah 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 to social media. Ito may significance, historical or ideological significance. Actually, very uh, insightful na yung archiving and parang pag-usapan din natin over drinks. Yung necessity of like theorists and like and like writers in general. Um, why is criticism important? Mm -hmm. And bakit wala masyadong maayos? Parang walang, ano ba, hindi strong yung like grounds for it at the moment. And like, people are still talking about if we really need something like this. So parang, eh, mga many players of the ecology, um, I guess, really worth talking about. And it's really nice na nabing up to today. Thanks. Thanks.
Well, there's two things. I think your question is about you know, how to use the internet and social media as a way to, like, I guess, get your message out there. Right? Uh, how are you using it? Okay. Okay. Um, for my personal practice, um, because I occupy different spaces, I have been getting really bogged down recently in like promoting our shows on social media and by oh, go to this venue or tune in at this time. But I've been trying to make more of an effort to um, use social media as a canvas in a way. Um, so I'm using it artistically rather than just like as a commercial board or like a promotional board for myself. So the I feel like I've been getting disconnected with my own practice um, by just using it as a way to promote my show. So for me, with my journalism practice, it means that like, I'm using I'm using my account as a way to like practice my writing um, or to convey ideas in a way that I would with my journalism like on other platforms in that school um, and like recycling a lot of my old work rather than like promoting it when it's fresh. Um, so like that's that's one thing that um, I've sort of been practicing. And the thing about the criticism, um, the cultural criticism, there's something really interesting from uh, Bienvenido Lunar, who is um, he uh, he was like the head of Philippine studies in UP. He's not alive anymore, but he has a book on um, vernacular literature, and he was talking about how. Like um, with the Philippines, like a lot of the archive, like the Filipinas were um, at the, at, at, for, a, for a while, like just exclusively available to like scholars. Um, and so it meant that a lot of information was gatekept. Um, and, but at the same time, there isn't like a lot of, there wasn't an abundance of resources that we could draw from, from like at a descriptive level for like a lot of vernacular culture. And so what he posits is that. Um, while there's a lack of documentation, and I think about this with Bidots, which is that while there's a lack of documentation for descriptive level um, uh, accounts of a certain piece of literature or culture, there isn't anything wrong with like conducting research at a descriptive level while there's not enough information about it. Because when we're using criticism through the lens of like, um, like a Western case, let's say like criticism at the level of like how either like Shakespeare or like modern realists or techno or house or noise or industrial and how that's been like at the West especially that's been hashed out already so many times by so many people and there are these like Western frameworks of analysis that help us criticize a body of work. Whereas in the Philippines we don't even have a lot of but we don't have a lot of body of work to criticize from. So uh, uh, an equally productive way to sort of address the criticism issue is to actually create bodies of work that are more descriptive rather than that rather at the le level of criticism. And then once we develop it, then, then maybe we can you know, deconstruct a lot of the descriptive work that's already available for noise or industrial or um, internet radio, things like that. Bienvenido, Lumbera. Thank you so much. And I think the one of us did the bridging those memories because we had a lot of like written books that I think we need to like, um, bring up again. So I, uh, I think that's all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go over So uh, I have a very productive uh, and I hope Everyone found value in the show.